for realtor.com. Um, a big part of our industry, unfortunately, has been uh, gobbled up by other tech companies, prop tech companies, um, and really is dominated by a referral culture at this point. Now, listen, I love referrals. I'm here in Cincinnati right now. I'm going to speak to hundreds of people tomorrow. And with the sole reason is I want to get more referrals for my team. Um, that being said, the people that are running businesses based off of Zillow, paying them 35% every closing or relocation, paying them 40, 50% every closing. And all it is, is a name and number. That's not a profitable model for scale. And so when I moved to Orlando in 2016, I was doing this. I was spending a ton of money on Realtor.com, Zillow, uh, radio ads, just a ton of different stuff. And I was going broke because while I was closing some deals, I wasn't actually a, running a profitable business. And so in 2018, I figured out YouTube or started to figure out YouTube and have really dug in that over the past five years. Uh, and so we're going to talk a bit about that today. And then... Um, and figured out a model where I could figure out if I'm giving value to people, whether they find me on YouTube, Instagram, our newsletter, our website, and one of the other 17 ways that we go find business, that those are actually going to be more committed people. They're going to want to work with you. You're not going to be a commodity anymore. It's not going to be where they're on realtor.com talking to 10 other agents and you're fighting and have to do the 10 days of pain and all of these other kinds of things. My goal is to create a system where they would be excited to work with us. And so that's essentially what, what we've done. Now, I started off on YouTube. Not everybody has to start on YouTube. You can start on Instagram. You can start your own blog. You can start a newsletter. Whatever it is that you do, you just have to be massively consistent. Um, so first thing I'm going to show you, I guess, is my is the YouTube channel, because that's, again, I think what most people know or have questions about. I'm just trying to find my screen here. Sorry. Via Zoom without, there we go, share. Is that coming through? All right, so say you want to start with YouTube. Is this coming through okay? Can someone give me a thumbs up? Yep. yep. Okay, You're good. Cool. So, so now I've put out 528 videos over the past five years, which is a lot of videos, right? And And what would you think that that has created for us in regards to what's the key in, in all of that? Say it again. Consistency. The, consistency, the C word, consistency. Now, here's the thing, any, any of you guys watching this, the big thing about anything we do in this business, consistency is where you're going to win. If you're doing open houses, doing one open house on a Saturday does not make a career. So the fact that so many people put out like one video on YouTube and then stop and they think, oh, YouTube didn't work. I didn't go viral. I didn't go whatever. It just blows my mind. So I've done 528 videos over five years. I've put out one a week at least, if not two a week, and I've never missed. And so going through a few things like this, you can see on my channel anyways, you're going to notice a few different, um, few different things here. So there's really different what we call buckets. You've got some that are what I would call moving to or living in buckets. So that's the Horizon West kind of videos that we've got here. Um, we've got the coming soon video, which I call, it's like what, what's exciting for the Lake Nona area, what's exciting about iDrive. It's talking about what's going on. Now, those are my two buckets. Typically, if you're moving to the area, you're going to go on Google, you're going to find this. Now, thankfully, YouTube is owned by Google. And so whenever I put out a video about an area that people are looking into, our videos come up. The other thing is what, what I was noticing was that I was getting a lot of people that unfortunately um, were like, I was getting a lot of buyer leads only. And my goal was how do I get more people that actually live here to call me? So we started putting out a newsletter every week that talks about what's coming to the area to pair really well with that second bucket I talked to you about, which is coming soon to Orlando. So our brand, what we call it, is the Orlando Real. You can call it whatever you want. It can be um, Amanda's List, right? It can be literally anything you want. But creating something of value that you're giving to your database is really what this is. Um, when I say starting a media company, all I mean is that we put out a lot of media and we get in front of a ton of people. Last month, we got in front of 1.5 million people. And in that, it turns into business. 
Now we've all talked about this for years and years and years. If you've read the MREA, you've seen the 36 touch, or it used to be 33, now it's 36. And most of us are doing 50, 60, 70 touches a year now. Your goal in all of this is two things. If you're going to write anything down beyond consistency, it would be this. Create a list or build a list and then provide them value. And out the other end will come leads. And those will be better leads, better quality, more bought into your brand. They can be kind of whatever you want, because if you don't want to ever sell a house in the reunion area or a Davenport short-term rental, then you're probably not going to put content out about those areas. You focus in on the content that you want to create that will attract the kind of clientele that you want. If you want to be a luxury agent in Orlando, you probably aren't hanging out in Pine Hills doing content about whatever happens in Pine Hills. <laughs> okay, you're going to be in Winter Park. You're going to be in Windermere. You're going to be doing content in these areas so that when people find you, they're like, holy crap, Fallon Moore knows everything there is to know about Windermere. I need to give her a call. And that's kind of our what, we, what we've what we done um, with our entire our entire system. So going back over to going back over to YouTube. If you want to try to go against us on YouTube, please do. Everybody, you know, everybody says, "Oh, you're, you know, you're teaching everybody what you do on YouTube." It's kind of a personality-driven business. Yes, there's a lot of things that I'm going to teach you today that will make your YouTube better, but at the same time, some people are going to watch your videos and they're going to gel with you more than they gel with me, and that's fine. Um there's a lot of people out there. Like I said, we got over 1.5 million people that saw our content last month. There's a good chance that we overlap and they're going to choose you over me or vice versa. So there's a few things when you're looking at YouTube that are really important. Number one, they say, you know, what you name your channel. Some people think it matters. Some people think it doesn't matter. I would say that it does not matter. It has no searchability at all. But what you want people to do is when they land on your YouTube to understand very, very clearly what your YouTube channel is about. Is, is Are they coming to your YouTube channel and it's dog and cat videos mixed in with restaurant reviews mixed in with real estate mixed in with i want to be an influencer they're going to be like i don't want anything to do with this so get really really clear with what your channel is about what your brand is about and then go from there so for us you can see it's ken posick subscribe for weekly videos real estate theme parks and orlando life for me that's like my all-encompassing bucket. Maybe you want to go and you want to be an influencer on a national level and you just want to be like the real estate guru. Awesome. Then it won't be Orlando real estate and theme parks. It will be your, your number one source for all things real estate. Or maybe you just only want to sell in Claremont and you just want to freaking dominate Claremont. Then it'll say, you know, um, Amanda's YouTube channel, Claremont experts follow here for all things Claremont. Now you're probably going to have a much smaller audience but someone raise their hand and let me know, would this be a more niche bought in audience than someone who's very broad? Yes or no? Yes. So you just have to decide who do you want to be? Who's your ideal client? And then create your channel around that. So for again, us as real estate theme parks in, in Orlando life. The next thing to know is we well, already talked about what, what videos to shoot, but what are some things you notice about my thumbnails here, which are just these little photos before you start seeing the, the video. Someone unmute it and, and let me know. What do you see about the photos? Huge captions. Huge captions. What else? Your face. My face. Why do you think I put my face on every thumbnail? The brand. On the brand, right? So if people are scrolling through and they see like that top left one, 4 billion on iDrive, and my face isn't there, some people that are subscribers might just scroll right through. But they're like, oh, what does Ken have to say? You know, I've got 37,000, 37,300 people that get my alerts and they want to, I want to keep in front of them and let them know what's going on. So brand consistency is important, but going back to the, the, the bold letters, why, why the bold letters? Grab your attention. Let people know what they're getting at you immediately. Immediately. Yeah, exactly. Now, do you notice that I don't have like 27 <laughs> words on these thumbnails? Why do you think that is? Because you want to be able to read it clearly. Correct. Exactly. So I've seen so many agents that will put on, like this one, change, uh, change us about Orlando. That's the most words I've ever put on a thumbnail in years. 
um, because you just want to have one to three words that grab someone's attention so that they know exactly what the video is going to be about. And then it's stopping the scroll as they're going through their app. And then they say, oh, what's this about? Then they read the title and then they decide, is that title something that they want to watch? Now, if you don't get somebody to click on your video, they will never see how amazing your videos are. I've seen some of the most remarkable, beautiful home tours that have four views. And you're like, like why, why is that? Like, why, why could you spend thousands of dollars on a video to show people what the, the house looks like, what your insights are on the house, all the upgrades, all the beautiful drone footage, but has four views? The reason most of the time is two things. Number one would be that the thumbnail sucks and it's not engaging. And so YouTube says, hey, I'm going to serve this up to a thousand people. And of that, if you're getting a 1% click-through rate, then your video must be garbage and it will push you out of the algorithm never to be seen again. So slowing down and understanding your thumbnails is very important. The next thing is your titles. So your titles are where YouTube figures out the SEO. So before we started class, a bunch of people, we were just talking about uh, ChatGTP and BARD and Google and all that kind of stuff. All of this SEO stuff matters. SEO stands for search engine optimization. And essentially you're signaling to Google, what is it that is so great about your video? And so that they know who to serve it up to. If people are Googling moving to Claremont, and your video is named 123 Main Street, Google has no idea what your video is about and they will not serve it to the people that you intended your video to get in front of. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What questions do you have so far? Of those um, subscribers that you have, uh, are they all from organic uh, posts or like is any of this like paid ads or like boosts or anything like that? Yeah, zero, zero uh, paid ads. So it's all all from our organic, me just asking people along the way, which is a really good segue to ask or to, to answer next. So many people on YouTube, they want to be the next Ryan Serhant. And I get it. Like, I want to be the next Ryan Serhant. Dudes listing quarter billion dollar penthouses, right? Um, and yet you're not Ryan Serhant. Um, you are not on HGTV. You're not on Bravo. You're not on Selling Sunset. And neither am I. So unfortunately, a lot of creators and a lot of realtors will put out videos that are like, hey, this is Ken Posick with Keller Williams. And today uh, I'm going to walk you through my newest listing. It's going to be amazing. And by the way, I've since been selling houses for 10 years now. I've sold 500 homes and I love my clients. If you're looking to buy a house, I want to be a realtor. What do you think happens to the person watching that video? Exit out. They're out of here, right? So you'll notice you can't find one video on my channel where I'm like, hey, this is Ken Posick and I'm a real estate agent and I'm like, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's literally not to the very end where I'm like, hey, by the way, if you got any value out of this, I want to be your real estate resource of choice. Email me at info at posickgroup.com. And that's it. That's my call to action. How are you? Somebody's unmuted. That should be muted. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Um, so that's a big thing to know. When you're creating these videos, you want to create what Gary Vaynerchuk calls jab, 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 right hook, meaning you're giving them value, 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 and then you get to go in for the right hook. Once you provided so much value to people that they are now ready to raise their hand when it's time to buy or sell. Now, here's the other thing about this. We talked about consistency earlier. So much of what we do being consistent over time, like the chances of people Googling you today, finding your video today, calling you today is pretty, it's pretty slim. This is, if you've ever seen Gary, um, Gary Keller, just draw the hockey stick effect on the one thing. That's what this is putting out videos every single week and you're building a catalog and you're building up subscribers so that the time when they're ready to buy or sell, they're reaching out to you. Again, if you hate video and you just don't want you to put your face on video, that's fine. Building up your newsletter list. Like we have a database of like, uh, We've got a database of 26,000. And then on top of that, we've got 14,000 people that subscribe to our newsletter. So of that, I'm getting in front of thousands of people every single week that hear about our brand and they raise their hand if they're looking to buy or sell a house. But again, that took us now six years to build. 
So let's talk about some of the other, other ways that you can build a media company inside of your real estate team, inside of your real estate business. So YouTube, I think is number one. We just kind of dug through that. Does anybody have questions on YouTube before I move on from there? Using your YouTube to, to drive people to your, um, to your newsletter as well, or is that kind of like a separate, a separate avenue where you funneling all of that? Are you trying to funnel people to your YouTube, right? And then bring them to your database? Or are you funneling people from YouTube to other aspects and then into like, what does that funnel look like for you? That's a, that's a really good question. So, um, so on my YouTube channel, the only, like, the only call to action is again, at the end of the video. And then in the description, I say like, hey, if you're interested in anything or you want to go deeper in the conversation, go to the OrlandoReal.com. That's our blog. And you and then they it force registers them to sign up for the newsletter. So I'm constantly cross promoting. Right. So they sign up for the newsletter. We're putting out articles around Orlando, but then also our most recent video. So hopefully they're pushing back over to YouTube and subscribing there. And then in our email, every once in a while, I'll push my podcast or I'll push my Instagram. And I'm constantly just trying to get people in their world as many times as we can. So the way that our world looks like right now, we've got our, our blog, our newsletter, our YouTube channel, our podcast, and three Instagram accounts, two TikTok accounts. And I just started a, um, some a kind of clapper and um, the other one that just, just kicked up. I forget, uh, Chase is doing it. But we're trying to get everywhere and then constantly cross promote itself. Felt, so we're, we're in front of people as much as we can. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yep. All right. So I think YouTube, again, massive opportunity if that's your world. The next piece would be building the newsletter. I think that's is a really easy one that all of us should be doing. We're in Keller Williams. It's who we are to be doing a 36 touch. And I think, honestly, everybody should start with like a 50 touch. And that is should be all email. It's so easy to do. You time block it. We use constant contact. And I'll try to show you real quick what this looks like. We use constant contact while I'm telling, doing this real quick. Um, real quick, sorry. All right, here we go. And share. All right, so this is what our, our email newsletter looks like. Again, this looks very familiar. It's our YouTube, it's our YouTube video of the week. And then down here, I have our writers, our team members are writing stuff, The Hangry Bison in Winter Park, uh, Elevate, Fun in Sanford, check out our podcast again, because we're cross promoting. And then down below the Orlando Reels by the po Posey Group, Keller Williams Elite Partners 3. And that's it. That's our call to action. And this goes out twice a week. These articles are different. The videos are different. Um, but again, it's building that list. And so constant contact has actually something built in. And I think command has this as well, where you can basically set up a squeeze page. And it's like, Hey, if you want to keep updated on everything going on in Orlando or everything in Florida or everything in real estate or anything, in your just small local niche community, maybe you live in celebration and you just want to create a celebration only newsletter about pickleball and all the other kind of crap going on there, right? That could be you. Um, but growing that list and then serving it once a week, minimum is going to bring you business like you couldn't imagine. The amount of engagement we get with our newsletter and then then our, then they I can follow them from when they click on our website then sign up to go buy a house is we're helping like 10 to 15 people a month from that alone. Any questions on the newsletter piece? What kind of content are you putting in it? Uh, what I just showed. So the videos, it's articles about around town. It's it's new developments. It's um, builder incentives. It's it's everything that's not how great you are. Your new open house, your most recent sale, because nobody cares about that stuff. Unfortunately, I mean, like we have this industry that's been built up on people sharing stuff that nobody cares about, like your awards and all the other kind of stuff. It's great. Share them with your parents. Share them with your spouse. <laughs> They'll be proud of you, uh, and then move on. You know, it's it's you, you got to look at what what does the consumer actually care about and creating content around that. Um, the next thing is is going to be Instagram. I think it's a really big opportunity, even especially right now because they're pushing so many things over on Instagram. Um, and so I'm going to show you kind of what ours looks like. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Go ahead, share. I have a question. Please. 
Uh, yeah, so about like, what what does your systems look like for the homework that goes into what, what you're going to post? Mm, on Instagram or where? Uh, well, YouTube, like, well, mainly YouTube, but then also like you're coming, coming to Orlando, like all the research, market research and like project research, I guess, commercial research, whatever that is. Open yeah, su super good question. So, so for me, I put on, um, on, yeah, there we go. If you have a question, unmute yourself. There you go. Perfect place to, um, or drop it in the comments and I'll come to you. Um, all right. So for, for me, I have it, I have it scheduled out every single week. It's exactly the same. So on Wednesdays, I have time blocked in the afternoon to do research for my videos that I will shoot on Thursday. So I spend 90 minutes going through articles. I have, uh, I've got, I spend probably $2,000 a year on subscriptions to Forbes, Wall Street Journal, Orlando um, Business Journal, Orlando Sentinel. Um, it's literally 10 to 15 different subscriptions. And I will go through for 90 minutes on Wednesday afternoons and figure out what is there to talk about. I go through permitting. I go through a ton of different stuff until I find something that I'm interested in that I would be passionate about sharing. And then I'll try to come up with at least four to five things out of there that I might want to turn into either blog form, short form video content, which we're going to go into next, or a, a YouTube video. Once I have that sparsed out, Thursdays are my content day. Now, you, you might not be in a place to do content for an entire day. Like I've been working on this to where my ideal role on my team is recruit amazing talent like Fallon, who's on the, on the call and shooting content and growing the brand. Those are the only things I really spend time on at this point. And so Thursdays, I, sh I show up on Thursday morning, I shoot short form content from the articles I found the day before. Then midday, I go out with my long form videographer, who's also our long form editor. And then at night, I go live on YouTube from 7 to 8 p.m. And I have hundreds of people show up and watch me live talk about YouTube or talk about Orlando, talk about real estate, theme parks and, and crap that's going on here. Um, and that's great because I get to interact with those people and I have them ask questions and those questions then turn into videos for the next week. And so it just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy or a self-fulfilling cycle of what people are doing. Is that helpful? Yeah, that was awesome. You, you got to treat it. I mean, here's the thing, content creation, you have to treat it like an appointment. You know, we've talked about in bold and all these other classes we've taken that if it is in your calendar, if it's not in your calendar, it doesn't exist. And that if you erase, you must replace. Those are like the, we've heard these like laws over and over and over again, yet so many people will, will try Instagram. They'll try the newsletter. They'll try YouTube. And then they fall off after two or three weeks because they get too busy. Um, I look at it from this idea of, of priming the pump. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever sold a house with a well before, especially the old school ones where you have to actually like prime the pump and you have to pour water in to get the pump going. And if you let the water fall out of the well, the well will dry up and you'll never see it again. It'll, you have to then prime it again. And it's this whole process. Think of content the same way. Like if you don't, if you stop, then you're going to have to come back to the well and you're gonna have to prime the pump again. And it's gonna take a lot longer to get going instead of just kind of keeping the pump going every single week, week in and week out. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, let me show you our Instagram and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get some other questions here. Boom, boom. All right, so home profile. All right, so this is, um, there's a lot of different types of things you can do on, on Instagram, right? You've got your stories, which are just stuff that, that go, people go to up top. And I mix in on my stories, a little bit of personal, a little bit of Orlando, a little bit of real estate. So interest rates went to 7%, I shared it. Um, new restaurant opens up, I share it, right? In the stories. Down below, you want a really healthy mix of both posts, which are just static posts like this, and reels, which are stuff like this. Can you guys hear that by chance? The chairman of Parks and Experiences for the Walt Disney Company was on a call for J.P. Morgan, which was their Global Technology, Media, and Communications Conference. Much of what he said we already knew, but there were two things that were really interesting. Number one, he said that by closing the Star Cruiser, they're going to be able to write off $300 million in losses in this year. Now, here's the crazy thing. Many people thought maybe they would read. So that's what, are, you know, you, you've got a lot more reach with reels these days, and those are just 60-second or less 
posts. And that's obviously really, really well done. We have got an editor on staff. It makes it look amazing. You can do it yourself with CapCut and a lot of other apps like that. But the name of the game with Instagram is just being massively consistent. Like you notice here that we like we post every single day um, and, and I just don't miss. But mixing it up with some posts and also reels are going to be the way that you win on Instagram, being really consistent, going on the disc, using the description as essentially another form of SEO because you're telling Instagram what your post is actually about will help you allow, will allow you to get organically found. So if people are searching for stuff about Orlando, you want to be found. So talking about Orlando and using some a couple hashtags to make sure that you show up, that's how you win. And so we I went from like 2,000 followers 18 months ago to 14,000 on my personal page. I think we're almost up to 17,000 on our newsletter, the Orlando Real Instagram. We're on like 31,000 over on TikTok. And it's the same stuff, just being really, really consistent. Who has questions on Instagram or short form or like any, any of this other stuff? When you say the same stuff, are you cross posting the same content? I am on, on TikTok and Instagram. It's the same exact stuff. Now, now TikTok has a much shorter lifespan or shorter. Um, they have a much shorter view duration. Like people are used to watching 10 to 15 second videos. And so our videos, some of them pop off and get hundreds of thousands of views over on TikTok, but most of them are like one to 2000. And then we do really, really well over on Instagram. Here's the reason I love Instagram more, way more than TikTok is that Instagram is the, what I call the DM culture. Does everybody know what I mean when I say DM culture? Who doesn't? And then I'll explain it. There you go. I like your, thank you, Diane. So a DM culture is like, can I get somebody to engage with me online? Like, can I take this relationship a little bit deeper? And so on TikTok, like how many raise your hand if you're on TikTok? Okay, there you go. A bunch of people are. So how many of you are messaging the creators a ton or talking with your friends a ton or sharing a ton of stuff inside of the TikTok app? Almost nobody. Like this is not, this doesn't happen. Like I get, I get people that text me TikToks all the time. And then we talk via text about the TikTok that we just saw. Instagram, you can talk directly with creators and it's a very normal thing. You share stuff with your friends on Instagram back and forth. And so the amount of people that find me on YouTube, then follow me on Instagram, then ask me questions about real estate in Orlando, it happens multiple times a day. And so um, that's why I think I think Instagram is like being poorly utilized by a lot of agents because usually what they'll do is they'll throw up their new photos of their new listing and call it a day. You need to make it to where I'm putting out content that people are going to want to engage with me about so that we can have this conversation back and forth and convert them into somebody eventually. Valerie asks, please list your types of content uh, for your IG. So I think, so this is a, a very simple formula that I follow. I put up, I put up three stories every day and those aren't edited. That's just on the fly. Just when I think of, I see something cool, I take a picture of it and post it. And I usually use as many of the features that Instagram allows that you can, like you'll notice I put on that one I showed, I was like thinking about, should I watch Succession? Everybody keeps talking about this damn show. Maybe I should watch it. And so I put it up with a, with a box underneath that says, what do you think of the show? And I had hundreds of people respond to that little box. Um, so the more features you can use on Instagram, the better. So three stories a day, and then one post or reel a day. Is that helpful, Valerie? Thank you. All right, there she goes. Awesome. You said your stories are just on one fly. Yeah, the stories are pretty much on the fly. I, I don't really uh, spend a ton of time there. It's just being really, really consistent, three to four posts a day. It used to be people talk about, you know, do 10, 15 posts a day. And I think it started hurting their engagement. And it's cool because Instagram actually shows you how many people viewed your story. And so you start figuring out this flow of like types of content that you're putting out based on how many people are interacting. If you get a bunch of people that watch your first story, like, you know, you got to think about it like that. It's put it, put it's like in a line like this, right? If they watch your first story, but they don't make it to their last story, that means you bored them along the way. <laughs> and so if you have, so for me, I'm getting roughly 2000 views on my first story of the day. 
and probably 1600 by the end of the day. So that's pretty high retention. And it just took me a long time of like figuring out what do people enjoy engaging with? Again, going back to YouTube and creating content for people that's not about me, creating content for them that they can engage with. People like to give their opinion, which is why I use polls. People like to give interaction, so they do. And then every once in a while, we'll pop stuff about real estate stories. That's interesting. That's not about, it's a buyer's market. It's always a good time to buy a house. Like people will tune you out. So we don't, we don't do that stuff. How much of your stuff is personal versus business? Yeah. I mean, on my personal account, it's, um, 30% personal, 70% business. And, and again, it's not all business. Like if you go watch my Instagram, it's like mostly news or like stuff that might affect people in Orlando or people that live in Florida. Um, I'm always praising my team because I love my team and who they are. I wouldn't be them with be here without them. And so, and I also don't work with a lot of clients anymore. I only work with maybe one or two a month. So I want people to know that I have a team and that they're amazing. So I'm constantly talking about them. Um, but yeah, it's just, don't don't post your home snap award ever again. How about that? <laughs> what else you got? How much of your business comes to your personal account? Um, I'll, most of it. Uh, yeah, most of the DMs come to my personal. We get a lot of exposure from the Orlando Reel that we've created, but most of the mm -hmm. time they they follow they follow both of our accounts. We also just kicked up a Posit Group account and we're doing home tours. We're kind of testing that. But again, I wanted another way to feature some of our agents um, and just kind of see if that works. Um, but we got like four or 500 followers in the first month, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, most of the most of the stuff comes directly DM wise in, in my personal one. Are you fielding your DM messages as they come in or are you kind of time blocking throughout the day for your responses? Like, how are you managing that? Yeah, I I, I started off answering them the moment I saw the alert um, and until it got to be too, too cumbersome. And then now I'll just wait till it racks up to 15 or 20 DMs and then I'll answer, which is usually once or twice a day. Um, so I'll try to go in and just knock them all out at once. That way I'm not as reactionary and not like as, as tied to my phone and like obsessed with answering every notification early on. You can do that. I mean, eventually you'll want to get another way. I really strongly suggest you don't add an auto responder. I don't know if you guys have ever been on Instagram and you, you DM somebody something and it's like, thanks for reaching out. Uh, we're not here right now. If you want more information, go to my website. It's like, it's a, it's really not personal at all. And so um, I just, I strongly, I know a lot of realtors that do it. And I think it's the dumbest thing ever. It, it makes it feel like, Hey, I got this personal one-on-one -on -one experience with Ken and now it's very corporate in the DMS. I want it. I want it to be even better in the DMS for people to where they're like, Oh, I've, I watched this. I he's, there's no way he's answering his DMS. And then I am. And then they're like, Holy crap, this is awesome. I really want to work with this team. How long did it take you before you started seeing results? Like as you were doing like your YouTube videos or doing your Instagram reels and all that? Yeah, on um on YouTube it took me like four months. I put out um I very stupidly <laughs> uh put out like a hundred videos in a hundred days. Maybe it took me 110 days or something like that to put out hundred videos, but it was pretty darn close. Three months I put out hundred videos. And they were not good. Most of them are still up if you want to watch them and to like a, a cautionary tale of what not to do. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, feel free. But, um, you know, four months of that, and I got my first call and it was like, they bought within 30 days. It was like right away. I'm like, oh shoot, this, this works. And so, um, then it was like, okay, I can't keep going at this clip because I'm a realtor. I'm not a full-time content creator. And so, um, I went to like, what's actually working, what, what things are people actually reaching out to, to me about. And so, um, by like six months in, I was getting one or two leads a week, by year one, it was like one a day. And then our peak peak was like uh, May of last year, we were getting like 10 to 15 leads a day. Um, now that's probably fallen down to more like five to 10. But I mean, these convert at like, uh, like 20%, 24%, which is if you know anything about internet leads, like pay-per-click probably converts if you're good 
at four or five percent. Zillow converts at three percent. Is that what they try to hit you? And most nobody converts Zillow at three percent in today's world, anyways. Maybe over a year or two, um, but most people convert more like a two percent. So the quality, like I'm trying to say, is that it's just it's ten times better than anything else you're doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How much of this did you do by yourself? And when did you start adding team and hiring out? I mails myself. And so um, it's just something that I enjoy. It's something that it's like my, my art craft, craft art. Uh, that's a weird thing to say. It's I like it. It's my craft. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so eventually, though, I, I hired an editor. I, I found them on Upwork. And I paid them like a hundred bucks a video. And so I would go shoot the video, then upload it to the cloud. They would edit it, send it back. That made it look a little bit better. And I think that's probably the route most people should go. If you're not very like handy, just go out and film the cool stuff you see and then send it to an editor for 80 to hundred bucks. Start there because that'll be some of the best use of your money. I mean, I don't know anywhere else you can spend five grand a year and get a couple hundred thousand dollars in GCI. Um, you got to do the work, you got to show up and all that kind of stuff too. Right. But, um, and then eventually we hired a, like a, a videographer who was also an editor and he's been working with me now for the past three years. Other questions? i got a couple more minutes. You, you've like gotten to where you, you are right now after like, you know, five years of consistency, um, starting off on YouTube and then expanding into the, the various different social medias. Uh, and you've got a, a large team kind of helping you right now. I guess uh, my question that I'm curious about is, you know, from your experience and going from, you know, the very beginning to where you're at now, you know, someone who isn't on social that much and is trying to start that, like what would be your recommendation as far as, you know, whether it's how consistent, how consistently you're posting, what you should be focused on, um, or kind of like, if you were to do it again, I guess my question is, is where would you start? How, what would that look like? If I was going to do it again, I would do YouTube and Instagram at the same time. Um, I would be putting out YouTube for the future. That's kind of like building up a bank account for your retirement, essentially, or there's probably a better way to think of that, but um, that's building up an asset that takes a little bit of time. And then Instagram, while it takes a lot of time, you can connect with all of the people you already know, all of your past clients, all of your sphere, all of the agents you know across the country, and you can start getting business fairly quick then from there. So if you're documenting your day, like Gary, like Gary V says, document, don't create. And what he's meaning that that is like, if you're out showing a house, show off that you're showing a house. If you're sending out an offer, show that you're sending out an offer. If you got a buyer, uh, one of this one lady on my team, Susanna is really good about this on Facebook. Actually, she posts every time she does anything, which sounds aggressive, but like she posts like two times a day. And most of the time it's like, I'm out showing a house. I'm out writing an offer. I'm out showing a house. I'm out writing an offer. I got an offer accepted. I'm going to closing. You'd think that she's selling 400 homes a year, but she's selling like 30 or 40 and that's, and she's freaking crushing. Um, but that's all she's doing is documenting what she's doing. She's not super creative, but she's very consistent. And again, I think somebody that's really consistent will win over somebody who's really create creative, but all over the place every time. Um, so I would go on Instagram, document your day. And then eventually, if you can start getting into some of the reels and some of the other stuff, um, then go with that. But even if you just started on your stories and you followed everybody, that's a client, you follow everybody that, you know, that is going to get you business this year. Um, what's that, Alexa? I was going to answer that one. Um, so do I post my content on Instagram at any specific time? No. Once we just, once we have time to do it for the day, um, whenever the editors get it back or sometimes they do breaking news. So if I think there's a story I want to cover, it might be later in the day. It might be earlier in the day. Um, Valerie asked, what security features do I have implemented so that, and do I have any other concerns? Security features. Um, I have two factor authorization, uh, two, two FA, two factor authorization. Yeah. On everything. So my Gmail, my Slack, my Instagram, my YouTube, all of that. So I don't get hacked. Um, if you're talking about from a personal perspective, cause I do have some whack jobs that have driven past my house and told me that they did. So, um, you know, we've got 
cameras and security and the Second Amendment. Um, that, was supposed to, that was supposed to be funny. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, oh, and she said, "Okay, thanks." Yeah, that's there you go. So, how do you battle uh, complacency, or do you ever experience it? I'm sure everyone does, probably, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's it's evergreen, right? So, you ever what was your biggest lull, and how do you get over that, or how do you prevent that from happening? Um. So, so this is my world. Maybe yours is different, but I, uh, I invited other people into my world and had to make it bigger, so that I knew if I didn't show up, I was harming other people. And I care about my team members, like their family. And I know if I don't show up and do content, that they're not going to be able to eat ninety days or one hundred and twenty days from now. And I take that very personally. And so I show up for them. I show up for my own family, right? And so I know that how I feel that day does not matter. It matters if I show up and perform. And so um, that's my thing, man. I, I don't miss. How much of your business is uh, referral and journaling because of the nature of the platform, you know, being on YouTube and everyone can see it. Uh, I imagine a lot of agents are probably following you as well and are sending you referrals, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, um, so for those of you who don't know, I left Keller Williams back in July. I came back in February. Um, but before we left, we were getting an agent referral every single day. That's freaking ridiculous. Like, I mean, I, I maxed out my friends on Facebook. That's a whole nother world we could talk about on another day. But I think that all of you should on Facebook be going to add a ton of realtors that are not in Orlando. Do not friend request me on Orlando. If, uh, if, you, if you're here in Orlando, I love you. I hope to see you at a mixer. Don't friend request me on Facebook. Uh, follow people outside in Tampa, in Miami, in West Palm. Those are your referral partners. Yeah. So do that. Um, it's a very big piece of our business. So now that I'm back, um, we're still getting three to four agent referrals a week. My goal is to get that up to, you know, seven to 10 uh, a week. It's a huge, huge number. Um, but our content creation, so we're going to do about a quarter billion in sales this year. I don't think I talked about that earlier. We sell a lot of houses. We're at uh, 271, 271 sales closed and pending for the year. And over 40% of that comes from our content creation that we do. Um, a little over 20% of that comes from referrals from other agents. And then we have a very, very healthy past client and sphere business. Um, so, yeah. That's what it looks like. And then as far as tracking, do you track, like, I mean, sometimes you can see if it's from YouTube, sometimes we can see from just like, hey, I found you on Instagram. But I mean, if it's cross-platform, if they like found you on YouTube and then reached out on Instagram, like it all gets mixed together. Do you care? I mean, when you track, like how do you, do you double count? What does that look like? Yeah, we're we're uh, dogmatic about counting. Like we are just we're obsessive about it. And my transaction coordinators they know that the moment an agent on the team turns in a contract, they need to know where it came from, what their name was, if it was a referral, who was the referral from. Like we go down the rabbit trail. We want to know what's working and what's not. So on YouTube, it's very easy. Uh, I put info at posicgroup.com only exists on YouTube. So. Many times they'll say, I love Ken. I've been following him for the past couple of years. He's got great stuff. Um, I want to work with him or his team. But some people just email and say, hey, my name is Bobby and I'm moving to Orlando. We want to work with you. And so the only way I know is it because it came from that email address and forwarded into the ISA department. So I'm 100% sure of where that business came from. Um, beyond that, it's a little bit harder to track. So if they came through our website, I can see if they came from it. From if they came from a blog, I can see if they were redirected from Facebook. Our website's pretty good that way. Um, yeah, I think for the most part, uh, if you don't know, then you ask the client, hey, by the way, how did you hear of me? I'm so excited to work with you. And I just, I want to know what's working, what's not. And if they're like, oh, I, well, I found you on YouTube, but then I, when I found that I went over on Instagram and then I signed up for your newsletter and then, you know, we, we reached out and now we're working with Fallon. Cool. So to me, that was a YouTube lead because that's where the funnel started. Yeah. Are there any tips or tricks on specific conversion like tactics? So like, I mean, from TikTok, there's a very specific set of steps that you would have to take. Again, like you kind of mentioned, Instagram had that DM culture and TikTok, you have to be very intentional about taking a conversation off of TikTok and then up there 
from YouTube or Instagram, are they the same system? Or is it just like, we're just going to have a conversation or is it more intentional than that? Yeah, I think so. It, it's um, until they're ready to interact, it's just back and forth, either via DM or email. And then once they're ready to talk to an agent, then my eyes say is we'll book an appointment. So if it's me um, talking to them back and forth and they're like, hey, what do you think of this new builder? Or what do you think of this area? Or, hey, I think I might move to Orlando, but I don't want to be super close to the theme parks. Where should I be looking when I'm looking online? Like that's kind of like a, you know, there's six, nine months out. I'm just going to talk to them like they're mm -hmm. my brother, right? Or whatever. And give them as good advice as I can and try to get their contact information if I can. But many times we don't. And then they'll come back around. Hey, thanks for all your information. You know, we'd love to get started. Cool. What's the best way to reach out to you? And I literally screenshot that on Instagram, Slack it over, which is just our communication tool. I Slack it over to the inside sales staff. They call, they book the appointment or make the connection for the agent. And then I'm hands off. Um, if it's just you starting out, then the, con the conversation would be, you know, just, hey, tell me a little bit about your timeline. When can we get together and just talk for 15 minutes, either Zoom or on the phone? And then, or, you know, via or in person for coffee. Um, so the goal is always to like give value, get their information before you ask for an appointment, get their information so that you can follow up if they ghost you. And then the next thing would be book that appointment, whether that's a buyer consult listing appointment, whatever. And then by the way, like if they decide to reach out and then something changes in their life, then they get set up on our newsletter and they get invited to our client events and they get invited, you know, I'm following them on Instagram, I'm following them around. We, we now we, we've got a whole marketing team now that follows them around on the internet. So I've got, they're just seeing articles of us popping up everywhere. Like we're in their world really, really deep. Uh, so they won't forget about us. And so you got to kind of do the same way in your, in your own way when you're starting out. Is this helpful? Yeah, very much, very much. I know it's like drinking out of a fire hose and, and it's like, where do you start? Um, the biggest thing is just pick your medium and get started. Don't think about it. Again, I sucked terribly at YouTube and now I teach the stuff. So everybody starts somewhere. So just get going on it, stay consistent. And then you're just going to tweak it along the way. Again, if you're Instagram, if you're Facebook, if you're newsletter, whatever it is, you'll tweak it along the way. It'll get better and better over time. And that's when you win. So, so now that you're, um, well, what's that? I guess. Are you, are you good? Are you no, no more questions? Okay. One more question. Uh, Go I have, ahead. I have a lot of questions. Okay. So um, a question would be now that you're only doing about like two a month, and obviously the team is taking a lot more. What are some of the like um what are what were your biggest ahas in learning to have that seamless transition to hand off and how how engaged are you? Because of course a lot of these people start the conversation with you and then you hand it off like. How consistent or like what's your systems for staying in touch with these people so you still have that, hey, you still have access to me, but this guy's taking care of your transaction. But, or is it like no more can? Yeah. <laughs> so so again, it's setting the expectation up front that I work with a team. Um, and so they don't think most people don't, they automatically assume they're not going to work with me. They're, uh, you know, and, and so the conversation becomes cool. So tell me where you're moving. I'm moving to Windermere. Oh my God, that's exciting. What, what's important about Windermere to you? Well, we want to be close to the theme parks, but not super close. Oh, cool. What's your budget? Uh, we're looking between six and 800. Awesome. And when, when are you hoping, like wave a magic wand, when are you hoping to move? By July. Oh, wow. We have to get started like today then. That, yeah, for sure. You know who I think would be great for you to work with in Windermere is, um, is Brianna because she lives in Windermere. She knows it inside and out. She's like very similar like you, has, has a daughter and that sort of thing. When can Brianna reach out? And then I book the appointment if I need to. And then if not, it's like a follow-up game from there. So that's really like how we handle it from our inside sales perspective, if you will. Um, somebody asked what CRM, we use real estate webmasters and Brivity. It's a long story, um, but you got to look for the CRM that has what you're looking for. Like there's no perfect CRM. Command's great. Brivity's great. Real estate webmasters is great. It just depends. You know, you need to get really clear, like what you're looking for as CRM and then make sure that CRM has it and then use the crap out of it. So um, I have to run. I apologize, but thank you all for coming and hanging out with me. If you have questions, follow me on Instagram, shoot me a DM. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Ken. Bye-bye. I can get you a discount code for Brevity if anyone's interested in checking that out. Just have it test that out there. You're very resourceful. Thank you.